Mike and Kev, we are talking about bugging out. You know, in this overview, we, what we want to do is give you guys some ideas of what you should do prior to starting your detailed planning and bugging out. Like, I wouldn't even start packing out my loadout for bugging out until I've done some recce walks. We'll call this a uh, nature walk or nature hike doing a recon. Um, some of those considerations are survival, uh, land navigation, um, timing advances, caches, the list goes on. We're going to cover some of those things on today's episode, uh, highlighting them as we go. What we like to do is as we cover them, we're going to give you the once over the world and then at a latter point, talk about that in detail. So I'll let Kev start off with what, what the first things that you should do in practice when you infiltrate into an unknown situation during a bug out. Yeah, so let's say you're on your, your rehearsal walk and you're in a group of four or five. Uh, you need to practice crossing danger areas. So you're not, you're not behind enemy lines, but you need to be avoiding other people and contact with other people. So as you come up to a linear danger area, you need to real quickly conduct SILs. SILs is an acronym we use in the military a lot, and it means it's S-L-L-S, Stop, Look, Listen, Smell. So stop, cease all movement, nobody messing with the rucksack, and then the rucksack flop, stop. Uh, look, look for signs of the enemy, past and present. So you're looking for anybody that's out there, and I use the, en the, the term enemy lightly because it's anybody. You're trying to avoid contact with anybody. But you're looking for signs of them, past and present. You're looking for tire marks on roads, you're looking for burned out fire, stuff like that. Uh, listen, listen for water, listen for vehicles, listen for chatter, listen for gunfire. Sound carries a long way, especially at night. So as you do this, stop, look, listen, and smell. Again, you're smelling for cooking, uh, fires, anything that, that's man-made, all right? So anytime you move into a new area, before you commit to that area, uh, whether it's an open area or a danger area, just stop, look, listen, smell for about 30 seconds, 45 seconds before you move on. It's a real good habit to get into. Cool. What we're going to do is, you know, a lot of this stuff that you, you do reconnaissance-wise, you can do via Google Earth, researching on the web, and then you're correlating it with the reality on the ground. So we already did a map recon. Uh, recon. Uh, we looked at the imagery of my backyard, which is Prescott, and the area in which we would bug out. It's all circum it's all based on your circumstance and your environment. If you live in San Francisco, you're gonna be looking at city routes leading into more rural environments. But the idea is you're creating all the information and data to be able to make good decisions during planning before you even get there, right? This is the recon phase of what we're doing. So continue on with me and let's go on a hike together. On this journey. Come on, Dan. So I was just using an ancient Korean method of finding true north. It's not working. Um, I prefer to use my cell phone if I have reception. What we're doing right now is you're, you're developing your primary alternate contingency plans for everything you're doing out in the wood line. Like right now, I'd pull out my cell phone and go, do I have reception? Because if I have reception because the infrastructure hasn't collapsed, I'm going to use my cell phone. So that means I have to have the adaptable chargers. I have to have uh, the solar panels to charge those uh, battery charge hub stations. You have to make those considerations based on real time, based on what you have. Now I'm prepared to go to a Garmin. Then I'm prepared to go to a compass and map, but you have to figure that out on the ground. One thing that I recommend when you to go for your hike is you do keep a pace count. A pace count is you taking a range finder or a measuring tape, if you have one that long, a hundred yards and determining your 100 yard pace count every time your left or right foot hits the ground. For me, it's 60-ish steps uh, every time my left foot hits the ground. So now I could track via my map um, and, and correlate what's happening with me physically moving with checkpoints on the ground. All that stuff we'll get into detail about uh, uh, later on in another episode, 
But I just want to highlight that because as you're out on your nature hike, you're not arbitrarily walking through the woods. You're doing so deliberately with a plan on an azimuth, on a GPS, on a map, uh, on your cell phone. Uh, don't just walk around and just try to get ideas by being vague about what you're doing. Be very deliberate. Let's talk about caches real quick. A cache is when you pre-position equipment to retrieve at a later date. So let's just say you work, you live in New York City and it takes you 12 hours to get to somewhere in Westchester County. So instead of lugging all that equipment, you have your go bag and you pre-position equipment in a predetermined location. You get a 10 digit grid, you take a picture of the location and you, you annotate it on a map. And if you want to retrieve it later on, you got to think about if, if I can't get to it and I need to tell a loved one where to find it, then it should be easily, um, you, you, you should be able to describe it pretty easily. And then just bear in mind that if there's metal in it, if it's like an ammo can or something like that, it should be buried at least 18 inches, but a metal detector will pick that up. So if you've got a guy out looking for caches, then he may find it. So I personally wouldn't put anything too valuable in there i'd put water uh, depending on the location of where i am i would put um, maybe some ammo maybe some food uh, just heavier stuff that i don't want to carry like yeah. so. So as you're going to go on your nature hike to do your reconnaissance, you're going to come across different natural resources. You have to understand the environment in which you operate in, or bug, bug out in in this case. The reason I, I say that is because so many people uh, don't understand that the environment, including the season, is going to dictate how you're going to bug out. Let me give you a great example. This right here, which is a small uh, stream flowing through uh, this terrain is not on the map. This is not on the map. This, you can see river rock inside of it, so it's, it's, it's a legacy stream. It's been here for a long time, but this is all snow runoff. Like in the background, uh, the, some of the footage that you're gonna see, at 8,000 feet, there's a snow line, and all the snow up there is melting, and then that results in water pouring downhill. So, cool resource right now in the spring but late summer, this more than likely, and it, I know this for a fact because I know this is my backyard, this is gonna be dried up. So that, does that mean it's not a resource? Not necessarily, because one, it's a resource now. In a window of opportunity, it's a resource. At some time, it's gonna dry up, but there's still gonna be aquifers, natural streams, uh, natural spring water that's gonna allow you to tap into that. Why is that important? Well. As a primary plan, you need to have enough water on hand to survive, but carrying uh, 50 pounds of water is not going to be advantageous on bugging out. The most important aspect of bugging out is the physical movement itself. You want to streamline that movement, be on a dirt bike, be in a car, whatever it may be. What we're in right now is almost the worst case scenario, which is bugging out on foot. That's why we, we talk about it in content, because if we cover down on the worst case scenario, it covers everything in between that. So if you know how to survive in the woods, you're sure as hell gonna know how to survive in a vehicle. So this resource providing fresh water that's flowing downhill, it doesn't mean it's not tainted with bacteria. Remember other stream or water sources that are flooding into the stream are coming across deer feces, elk feces, and flooding inside of this stream. So that doesn't mean it's clear. That's why in this case, I carry uh, this life straw. Look. A life straw is super cool to tap into water that you resource in route. But you also want to use this resource to resupply your water. So I would also take my canteen, a stainless steel, keen stainless steel canteen is recommended because you could boil it inside. 
or use chlorine dioxide or iodine tablets to uh, sanitize that water. This purifies and sanitizes the water straight out of the water source and it's very good for it. So yeah, I'm gonna get a sip of water and continue moving. Let's talk about crossing danger areas. This is a linear danger area. It's an active road, there's traffic on it. So as we approach it, we want to make sure it's clear for us to punch across. We're going to conduct sills, but we're not going to hang around too long, 100 meters off each side of the road. Now, if you look at this terrain, it kind of funnels you down here, and there's an exit point here. This is what's called a natural line of drift, and this is where you would normally go. Now, if I'm security forces and I'm trying to contain you, as I drive these roads, I'm looking at these natural exit and entry points. And when I find them, I'm looking for trails across the road. If I can figure out where you crossed, I can box you in. That's where we're going to talk about counter tracking on the course and figuring out where's the best place to cross, where's the most secure pl place to cross, and where will we leave, leave the, the least amount of sign for people to track us. All right guys, so we just got done. It's been a few hours. Uh, we've been out in the wood line. Any day to me, it's like the flat range. Any day out in the wood line is a good day. Um, but the importance of what we accomplished today that you'll accomplish in your own uh, reconnaissance, man, I just turned this into a low rider. That was crazy. Um, is that every time you get out in your backyard, and, and listen, I don't mean literal, literal backyard because your yard could be an urban environment. It could be city streets, industrial areas, more rural stuff like fields. You might not even have access. Your reconnaissance could not be a hike. It could be like a drive-by, a close target reconnaissance in a vehicle. But nonetheless, you need to get out, outside and start seeing your environment and figuring out a way to create a plan that's tactically sound when you do bug out. And, and all I mean by that is you wanna be comfortable. You don't want to be sucking as you're bugging out. You want to be mindful in preparation and then setting yourself up for success. Hell, if you have the ability to put a circus tent in the middle of the woods to facilitate your, uh, your movement, then do so. But these considerations that we went over today are just part of the things that we're talking about in bugging out on foot. Yeah, once you figure out how much stuff you have to carry that you need, then you're going to figure out what kind of ruck you need and you're going to figure out your weight limit. I will tell you now, depending on how far you're moving, you probably want to be shooting for less than 45 pounds. Um, that's a lot of weight to carry a long distance, right? Um, so figure out what your weight is and then build up to it. Do a couple of terrain walks with 20 pounds, 30 pounds, build up to that 40 pound limit, and then just keep doing it and doing it. Rucking, like, like a lot of other things, is kind of perishable, and, but you can get very good at it and very strong at it, and uh, it's, it's good PT. Yeah, we have, uh, we have a lot to cover, guys. The next thing that we're going to talk about in the next video, Kevin's going to go over with you guys load out with specific equipment that's going to set you up for success. We're looking at ounces here. We're not looking at pounds. That 45 pound is probably dry without water, but you have to pay attention, uh, attention to every single ounce. This, the, the advantage of the ruck that we're going to build in the next series is going to be 
that could be in your vehicle, at your workplace, in your home, or on your back. It's gonna be able to facilitate all your bug outs from wherever, whatever environment you're potentially in. Remember, if you haven't checked it out already, make sure you go to philcraftsurvival.com, check out our bug out on foot. If, if you don't wanna take the course, read the description, stay tuned in, and get ready for the next course, because we're dropping many more after this, uh, and make sure you subscribe to this. Uh, leave your feedback for us, we love feedback, uh, but we wanna make sure that you subscribe. We appreciate all your attention to the content especially in uh, these trying times with COVID and everything that's going on. Uh, but yeah, continue to pay attention. And until uh, next time, stay alert. Stay alive. Later, guys.